Alright everybody, welcome back to the C Sharp tutorial series. Uh, the last video that we that we did, we took a look at sorting an array based on just swapping numbers. So, C Sharp actually has a much simpler way of sorting arrays. And uh, we're going to write a program right now that's going to take advantage of that. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create our new project. So let's do that. File new project. And then we're going to do a Windows empty project. And we're going to call this sort array. Okay, once the project has configured, we're going to right click on here, <clears throat> right click on the sort array project and add a new item, add a code file, and this code file is going to be called sortarray.cs, and I'm going to select add. So then once we get to the source file, the first thing that we're going to do is begin writing the program. So we'll be using system, and we're going to declare the class of sort array, and within here, let's declare the main function, public static main and open and close it perfect whoops I'm sorry public static void main perfect so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna kinda follow the previous method example and we're going to create an instance of the uh, random class so we'll do random and we'll call it RC and this is going to equal a new random instance after this I'm going to declare the maximum size of the array so I'm going to call this max and I'm going to make this equal to rc.next. So I'm going to make the maximum amount of the array a random number. And I'm, I'm going to give this a parameter. I want this to be between 0 and 1,000. I'm sorry, 0 and, zero and 1,000. So my array size is going to be between size 0 and 1,000. After this, we'll declare the integer array. Int test array equals new int array. And this is going to be of size max. So then once we've declared this, let's create a for loop. And then we'll make an instance of i equals 0 while, while i is less than max i++. Plus plus. Open and close the for loop. And just to test everything, and I'm sorry, I missed the semicolon here. So it's a semicolon space right there. So there's the for loop. We're going to test everything, and we're going to do console dot and I'm going to just do a console write, and then we're going to do, hmm, let's see here, test array of i. Now, I don't know if we've discussed what the write function is, but if I do control F5, I come up with some errors. So let me find what these errors are real fast. And it appears that I forgot my semicolon up here in the way, way, way beginning. <laughs> okay, so, <clears throat> in the way, way, way beginning. So let's try this again, control F5, and it compiles fine. But look how it concatenates everything right up against it like that. So if, if I had a, a right line, it would actually make a line for each one, but right concatenates everything next to each other. So that's just another way that we can write it. Now the reason it's printing out all zeros is because our array doesn't equal anything. So at least we know that we're able to print it out. So why don't we make it equal something? We'll do test, test array of i equals rc, make it a random number, dot next. So now we're going to have an array full of random numbers. And to practice using our methods, let's declare a public static void print array. And we're going to send this, this method to parameters, the first one being the array itself. So we're going to do ints, and then we're going to do the array brackets. And then in, I'm going to call the array a inside of this function, inside of this method. And we're also going to send it int max. So the maximum number is going to come down here as well. So we're going to do, let's see, 4. And let me just break these up like that. 4 int i equals 0, while i is less than max i++. Plus plus. So it's going to go through the array max amount of times. And I'm going to do console dot write. And then in parentheses, I'm going to do a and instance of i. So I'm going to print this, but what it's going to do is since we're using the write function, it's going to concatenate them all right next to each other. So let's take a look at how that is, how that looks. Oh, actually, I apologize. I never actually invoked the function. <laughs> okay, so after we fill, after we load the function, then we're going to do print array, and we're going to send this to two parameters. So it's going to be temp test array. Test array, comma, 
Max. Okay, great. So now test array is going to come down here and be used within that, and so is Max. So we'll do Control F5. And then there's my pile of garbage right there. <laughs> Close the output window and plus backslash N. And if you do that, you're doing the equivalent of right line. So if I do Control F5, everything's going to print in its own line. So we have all of these numbers right here. So I'm going to close this. Great. So it would be kind of a pain to sort all those numbers with the method that we used before. But fortunately, there is a function inside of C Sharp that's built in that we can use. Now, our function that we wrote before would actually be able to sort these. And if you'd like to, copy and paste that method and put it in here. And then we could just test it to see if it works. But we're not even going to do that. Right above the print array here, I'm going to invoke the array class. And I'm going to use the built-in sort function. Now inside this, all I have to do is pass it test array, and the array is going to sort. So if I do control F5, I get a brilliantly sorted array. So I can scroll up to see that I do go from lowest to highest.